everybody, and welcome. I'm Jim Noble, and welcome to the inaugural edition, virtually speaking, of the Jay McCauley Show. Of course, uh, life has changed since we all last met at RJ Rockers down in Spartanburg back in uh, March. Uh, Jay, first of all, welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Jim. Uh, excited to uh, kick off our first show, and uh, it's already been a really, really neat season so far. We're looking forward to the rest. I know that. Uh, We'll put it this way. I know what you were thinking after year one. Ah, first year as a head coach, I got this. Uh, year two, piece of cake. I know what to do. I know where to go. And then uh, about two days after we played the SoCon championship game in Asheville, life changed for all of us in many ways. Did you ever think that you would have to deal with some of the things that you've had to deal with as a head coach this year in 2020? No, cer certainly not. But uh, you know, I'm I'm no different than any other coach in the country, regardless of sport. We're uh, we're trying to manage a, a lot of things, and uh, certainly with our team, I know my players help me a ton in that they're great young men, and they're centered, and they're they're grounded here, and they support each other. So they make my job a lot easier. You know, I can only speak for our team uh, in, in that they're doing well. They finish finals well. And they've been able to play five games, so we're thankful for that. Well, we'll get into all the, the things you've got to do just to get on the court these days. But let's start off with that that three and two start coming off a really good win mm -hmm. uh, against Coastal Carolina the other night. Uh, you and I talked before the game. We talked after the game about the test that that team provided. I mean, they were long. They were big. They were tough. They were physical. And, you know, they for about a, uh, maybe midway through the first half, it, it looked like that was going to be a real problem. I thought you guys really dug in, dug in your heels, played unselfish basketball, played mistake free basketball for the most part. And I think that's the, the biggest thing I take away from that 10 point win at home. Yeah, there's no question about it. You know, credit to our team uh, for buying into to what we, we wanted to see on Tuesday night. And I thought. Coastal, who I think is the best team in the Sun Belt, and you know, obviously they had an injury there late in the first half. I hope Dixon's okay, but when they've got all their pieces, they got depth at every position: athleticism, length, skill, talent, and obviously physicality with their ability on the glass. But they're very comparable, Jim, to a Greensboro slash ETSU and how they play, their size, their physicality. So we we were able to communicate that to our team that. To, hey, this is going to be a, a, a top three team in our league type of game. And certainly our guys came out and played the right way for the most part offensively with 20 assists and obviously made enough plays defensively down the stretch to get the win. So very proud of our team, very proud of our older guys for leading the way that way. And by committee, I think everybody made positive plays and contributions all night. Yeah, the, the balance was incredible. I thought there were contributions up and down the roster. A couple of guys certainly stood out in the scoring column. Uh, one guy who you expect to get numbers like that from, and one guy maybe not. Let's start with the one who really jumped out. Uh, Morgan Safford had himself a career high. Uh, I, th I think he had been shooting his shot, Jay, and they just weren't falling the first four games of the year. But once he saw that ball go in a couple of times, it seemed to free him up, and they, he played – with a much higher level of confidence than I think we had seen. Yeah, if you guys recall a, a week or so ago in the Richmond game, he hit two back-to-back -back threes in the second half that were crucial for us to kind of build our lead and get that momentum back in our favor. And even though we fell short, we've been really trying to, teammates, coaches, keep encouraging them to play that way. And uh, in the first half, a few things didn't drop. And he's been in the gym. He's been in a really good headspace. And I think once he saw a few buckets go in, his confidence shot through the roof. And boy, did we need every one of those plays from him. And it's just really neat. I know you're in the arena and our fans are not, but you can see how happy, genuinely happy we are for each other when those moments happen. And Morgan's only a freshman. He's only going to get better. And he's continuing to figure out these things and you know, push through some times where things don't go his way and then obviously uh, really excel when things do go his way. So I'm glad he's on our team. And then on the flip side, that old grizzled veteran, Mr. Murphy, 
he is playing um he's always played with confidence Jay. He, he's always known what he can do on the floor obviously because of necessity i think he's got to be a little bit more aggressive on the scoring end and he has been talk about storm obviously his contributions on the court everybody can see it to me the biggest part of storm is what he brings off the court his intensity in practice the way he gets everybody else going i mean coming into his own his senior year and, and really starting off the season great he's had a great start um i'm hard on him and he knows i'm hard on him for a reason because you know a lot's expected from him obviously production wise but a lot's expected from me leadership wise and God's given him the ability to do that on a daily basis with his voice and his presence. And he does a great job of doing that with our team. And he's improved in that area quite a bit. And uh, boy, when he's playing free and confident, I think Cliff Ellis and Coastal Carolina threw every single defense you could possibly throw at him. Press, zone press, deny him, pressure him, switch on him. And he's just seen it all throughout the course of his career. And he obviously made big plays throughout. And our guys just were, I thought, in a calming presence because of his calming presence. And uh, that'll help us moving forward with our youth and, and some inexperience that we got, obviously, with our roster. Well, it was a great way to cap off uh, the week, the win for Coastal Carolina. When we come back, we'll talk about the business at hand. Uh, little trip down to Texas to face those Aggies coming up on Monday. We'll talk about that. Also, give you some inside looks at the voyage it has taken just to get on the basketball floor for the Wofford Terriers and, and Coach Jay McCauley. So we'll do that when we come back. You're watching the Jay McCauley Show, brought to you by RJ Rockers. Welcome back to the Jay McCauley Show. Jim Noble, Jay McCauley. And man, Jay, I'm just so excited to be playing college basketball right now, considering the alternative, considering, you know, where we were three and four months ago. There's so many things that, that, that fans don't see that you guys have to do just to get out there. Let's start with scheduling. You know, you, in May, you, you think, okay, schedule's done or, or close to it. And then we get a start date pushed back and we lose some pretty big out of conference games. that I know you guys were looking forward to, and you've got to scramble to fill the schedule. Talk about that. And then what happens when you scramble to fill the schedule and then you get bad news from another school, your head must just be spinning with all these changes. Yeah, it's, it's been, <laughs> it's been unique. Uh, it's like a surprise party, but not really a good party <laughs> every day. Um, and uh, you guys obviously probably remember the Bill Murray Groundhog Day. It's uh, it's kind of comparable to that. But, you know, we try to we try to keep everything in perspective and that uh, obviously we're thankful that a lot of people have been uh, put, putting in a ton of work, administration, faculty, staff, so that we can play. But there's no question that the scheduling changes from day to day. I mean, we, we make decisions on a whim sometimes just because there's curveballs coming left and right. So in order to do that, you got to have a really connected, well-communicated staff of trainers, coaches, administrators, and your players have got to be willing to pivot and adapt and adjust and not get frustrated. So certainly we had a great schedule planned for, for our team and our for our fans that we were excited about. That got pushed back and uh, we're able to open the season with a few non-D1s uh, for our young team and We've already scouted nine teams, Jim, and we've only played five games. So four of those games have been turned on its head either a day before or 48 hours before. And uh, boy, has it been interesting, but our guys haven't batted an eye and we're thankful. We really are. So when you add a game like Richmond or you add a game like South Florida, is there some like ultra secret text chat around division one coaches that you guys all get together or do your, do your assistants call people that they, they work with in the past. Do you call your coaching contacts? 
how do games like that come about? It's a secret society, Jim. Uh, <laughs> that or I'm, I'm convinced all the coaches' wives are like, hey, go play them so we can get our husbands out of the house. There we the go. Pandemic. But uh, it's word of mouth. It's literally comparing and matching up teams that have been postponed. Who doesn't have a max number of games? Who needs games? You know, I texted our whole Southern Conference coaches text chain. Hey, if anybody knows of a team looking, we are. And, uh, you know, things just align now with how we started the year and played Richmond really well and almost beat South Florida and played so well against Coastal, we're not getting any responses, to be honest with you. And that's that's kind of been the case for Wofford for a long time, but we'll play anyone anywhere just to get these guys games. It's funny how they just lose your number after you go on TV and play really well. I, 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 and you're right, that's kind of been for the last few years uh, – you know, people have been like, well, you know, we'd love to play you, but, you know, we're easing into things and you guys are looking good. So I know you guys have done a great job dealing with it. Just to get on the floor, your assistants have played a big role. Your, your trainer, Elise Hart, you mentioned the administration, the people at Jerry Richardson Indoor Stadium. Has it become second nature now to go through the testing, to go through the social distancing? The, uh, I, Wofford's done a great job. I, I'm the father of a, of a college senior, and I've seen the other end of this. And some schools haven't been so lucky. It's really been a group effort, really a university-wide effort. But how comfortable are you and the players with it right now? Yeah, I think we're as comfortable as you probably possibly could be uh, to an extent. We change our testing based off who we play, the opponent we play, the conference we're playing against, because everyone has different protocols state by state. But uh, fortunately enough for us, it's organized by our medical arms in terms of the hospital and the least heart and our, our medical staff. And then, you know, the biggest thing, Jim, for me is, is this up here for our players, our coaches, I mean, you're right. You know, a lot of people are going through things, different things, um, you know, out in the community dealing with, you know, families, businesses, jobs. I can only speak for our guys in that they're testing three, four times a week and things are getting flipped upside down. They're finishing finals. There's nobody on campus right now. Uh, and we're asking them to be isolated in a lot of ways that they're not used to. And these are all realities, right, Jim? And I can't coach the way I want to coach all the time because of our situation. I've got to pivot and be mindful of that. And our staff does a phenomenal job of reminding me that. I trust our older guys. They're really honest with me when they need something. And we'll continue to do that as best we can. And there's no, there's no blueprint to this. So we're just trying to really rely on each other to get through it. Yeah, after you get back from, from Texas A&M and after the game on Monday, they, they've got the, the, the break before we begin conference play. From a mental wellness standpoint, these guys need to see their families. They need to see their loved ones. I'm sure you guys talked about that. Um, I, I guess you just got to help everybody uses the best judgment. They all know what's at stake. They all want to play basketball. Um, and almost you, you got to treat them like the adults that they, they soon will be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, our guys have permanent marks around their face from masks. I mean, they're in N95 masks for six hours going on a bus to Richmond 24 hours before we found out that they're going to play. They're, they're, they're sacrificing a lot because they love to play and they love each other. And I think, I think a lot of these kids need to see their families after months being apart. And uh, we're certainly going to make that happen as safely as we can make it happen. And then hopefully uh, finish off this non-conference with a with a good showing up at Texas uh, A&M and then let them go home and then get ready for conference play. All right. When we come back, we will talk about basketball. The basketball that's been played so far is the Terriers stand at three and two on the season and the basketball that awaits in the Southern Conference. All that coming up next as the Jay McCauley Show rolls on, brought to you by RJ Rockers. It really touches my heart that individuals and angels treat you like family. They invest their love into you. They invest their business into you. And they give back to communities in rural areas like ours. I don't know exactly where family farmers like mine would be without Ingalls supermarkets.
And welcome back to the Jay McCauley Show, the virtual 2020 version. I told Jimmy Garrity when we recorded the women's show, I said, I'm going to be so happy just not to say the words 2020. Bring on 2021, Jay, and, and let's see. But still some work to be done in 2020. Uh, the trip down to Texas A&M. Um, watch them play um, the other night. Um, hey, they're an SEC team. They're big. They're, they're, they're physical. Uh, they really, really, you know, use those attributes well uh what sort of challenge are you expecting down at college station yeah it's going to be chaotic they're going to try to make it as chaotic as possible if i can give our fans a comparison they're going to play similar to uh you know citadel a frantic up and down style pressing gambling trying to get us to speed things up take us out what we want to do and hope that we make uh, what we call pick sixes uh, to convert on their end off our turnovers. So they're really good at getting fouled. They're really physical on the rebounding end. And uh, obviously they're gonna rely on turnovers. They're top 10 in the country in that. So we scheduled that for a reason to prepare us for league play and what we'll face a little bit. And certainly we're gonna be taking a young group, but some older guys that have been through that. So we got four or five days here to prepare. Yeah, pressure on your guards. We've talked about Storm Murphy. We've talked about Morgan Stafford. You've gotten Ryan Larson back for a couple of games, and you're still hoping that some of the young freshman guards can be back before too long. How do you feel about the backcourt overall, especially once you hopefully get back close to full strength? Yeah, about a month ago, I felt really good about it. Uh, and then we got a couple unfortunate breaks, one after the other. I mean, it was incredible. Uh, but that's how it goes. And a credit to the guys that have been healthy. They've kind of held the line. And, uh, you know, Keaton Turner was our second best shooter statistically at the backup point guard position. So I'm excited to get him back. And obviously, Max Pleasant was one of our best guards overall in terms of just toughness, grit, feel, IQ. I can't wait to throw him into the mix because he'll get us, give us much uh, needed versatility there at that spot. So. Uh, we're, we're excited to have more depth, more options, and uh, things to throw at teams to uh, expand on what we've been doing. Not to uh, disacknowledge all the other newcomers, but it was kind of cool the other night to see Austin Patterson uh, basically zip in from the airport, put on a uni, and, and go out there and score five points. Uh, a lot of fans would love to know the backstory about how this kid, who was supposed to be in prep school in New Hampshire at this point of his life, uh, got into a Wofford uniform so quickly. Yeah, it, it was one of the most unique things ever. Uh, we're, we're recruiting that kid hard to play for next year. And he goes to Brewster, obviously went to high school, had a great career out in California. Went to Brewster, one of the best prep schools in the country, is playing really well. And obviously up north in the northeast, a couple of those prep school conferences have shut down till mid-January, sometimes shut down completely. And so as we talked with the family, we, we had a spot open and just kind of said, hey, if things don't work out there, would you be willing to maybe come down here? I think there's a unique way, a loophole to get you into the mix now. And I would compare it, like I told you and Tom, Jim, to most senior football players who, who finish their football career in high school and then spend their spring semester learning the system ahead of summer school. And uh, we obviously needed him the other night in a big way. He got off the plane. I signed a paper to add him to our squad list 45 minutes before the game. And everything we did with him was not in practice for the most part, other than a couple walkthroughs. It was via Zoom. And a credit to him and his focus and his confidence to step in and just make plays at the right time. We certainly needed that. That's amazing. That was fun to watch. Um, you guys have done such a good job of bringing some energy. We, we always notice, in fact, the visiting uh, broadcasters a couple of times have said, your group is the most vocal on the court, on the bench, trying to keep that energy level when there's no fans in the arena. We all hope that changes before too long. We don't know what direction that's going to be in. Has that been a point of emphasis for you? Not only the guys on the floor talking like they, you always want them to communicate, but the guys on the bench kind of lifting that energy level up in the arena where, where normally you didn't have to worry about that. Yeah, I wish, I wish that talk would apply to transition defense and ball screen <laughs> defense a little bit more. But also, it's probably to cover up my horse voice that I lose during practice. So I appreciate our players for that. 
But we, we want to be a connected group. I know a lot of teams say that. We believe that. We do that in everything we do. We compete in everything we do. And I think over time, guys really trust each other with that. And we've had a few guys that aren't naturally good at communicating. We've challenged them to do that way above and beyond than they've ever done their whole life. And that's a learning lesson, not only for basketball. I think that's just getting them more confident as young men in themselves and what we're doing on a daily basis. That, that stuff shows up, Jim, at the, at the worst moments and at the best of moments. And we've already had moments of that where it's like, hey, here's an illustration and here's an illustration of not doing that. So to hear that, it obviously reinforces that we're on the right track. You mentioned transition defense. You mentioned some of the things. I know free throw shooting has been a little bit of an issue early on. But overall, you, you sit here in, in three and two. I know coaches are never satisfied. But what is your satisfaction level considering who you played, how you played them, and, and, and how this crazy season has started off? Yeah, I'd be, I'd be lying to say if I said I wasn't uh... – you know, frustrated that we didn't pick up those two, but it's a process uh, for a lot of these guys. A lot of these guys have never been on a road swing before. And I guess if, if I can really uh, narrow this thing down to, to what I'm preaching to my team, it's that we're continuing to take steps in the right direction, that, that the process is showing we're building the right way so that we're playing our best basketball like we did last March. Um, and I think the last game was a huge step forward with that. 20 assists, a lot more passing, a lot more paint touches, uh, a lot more deflections. I mean, we chart a lot of things that we hang our hat on, and, and those numbers are really well on, uh, on Tuesday night. So we're, we're going to build off that, not look in the past as much, and just keep trying to build on those things that we preach every day. All right, to that end, when we come back, we will look forward, see how the Southern Conference is shaping up this year, see who's been some early surprises and some teams that might have struggled more than we thought. Of course, we start conference play uh, at Mercer in just a couple of weeks, not even a couple of weeks. So all that ahead here on the Jay McCauley Show brought to you by RJ Rockers. The versatility of brick and new home design is endless. From textures to edges to mortar colors, brick creates unmatched aesthetic appeal. Brick can be used in any style of home design, ranging from craftsman, farmhouse, cottage, and modern designs. Most materials are susceptible to rotting, cracking, warping, fading, and weathering, but not brick. When it comes to storm safety and fire protection, brick is by far the safest choice for your home. Choosing brick for your new home will save you time and money. If you have questions about our products, we're just a phone call away. Welcome back to the Coach G. McCauley Show, brought to you by R.J. Rockers. Before too long, we're going to be kicking off SoCon play. That's That just sounds good to say, considering what it took to get to this point. Um, Jay, let's talk about the conference in the non-conference part of the schedule. Who's jumped out at you who maybe is a surprise, who perhaps has struggled a little bit more than you thought? I know it's all relative due to doing the scheduling and shutdowns and things like that, but what have your impressions been so far? Yeah, the, the impressions have been just how crazy the schedule's been. I mean, uh, usually we have a, a team or two knock off a top 25 team, and there's haven't been a whole lot of chances for that this year. I think that's because nobody's really willing to play our conference. But the regulars, top three or four, are, are doing what they're supposed to be doing for the most part. But I think, uh, you know, SoCon fans are seeing that Mercer has got two really good transfers that sat out last year is playing at a high level, even though they lost to Georgia State last night, they're playing well. I think the whole conference is, is playing above what people thought in terms of maybe at this point. And obviously the most important thing is conference play and that will settle in here in a few weeks. And uh, a lot of work has gone into from the SOCON coaches, the league to make that happen safely. And uh, we're looking forward to that. I know that uh, some teams it's probably hard to get a, a read on right now. You know, Chattanooga always seems to have kind of a revolving door and they got a shock when uh, David Jean Baptiste put his name in the transfer portal and, and, and they're kind of really kind of recovering from that, but they, they brought in a bunch of uh, transfers. So it's hard to know what they'll, they'll be like. Obviously a team uh, Greensboro's kind of stumbled a, a little bit early ETSU. Everything's new in Johnson city with the coaching change and some, some guys moving in and out. 
do, do you feel like you have a good read on your opposition yet? Or do you feel like you need to kind of get through those first conference games? And you, you've got you know, do you feel like you have a good read on a Mercer and some of the teams that you'll be facing early on? Yeah, I think we got a pretty good feel of knowing our league. Uh, however, the, the fans don't realize how many quarantines have gone into our league the league opponents, I mean, some teams have been shut down twice, 28 days. Some teams have been shut down three times. I mean, you just, it, it's really hard on these kids and programs and, and the athletic departments are trying to do their best to protect uh, each team. But there's a reality to this, that there's starts and stoppages. So to say that, you know, one team's playing really well or the other, there's a lot of non D ones being thrown in there just to make up from canceled games. As it stands right now, I think everybody's got a good feel, but we're, we're going to have to go through the league first round uh, to kind of get that true feel, if that makes sense. And yeah. uh, there's a lot of good pieces, a lot of good coaches in our league, and, and it's going to be another hard journey, I think, for, for a lot of teams. Top to bottom, is the league as strong as it was last year, stronger or weaker in your estimation? Yeah, I just think uh, – I think every year we're getting stronger and stronger as a conference. I mean, the notoriety, and I think it has a lot to do with teams like ours two years ago. It's just getting such national attention. Our recruiting has become more national. And I know a lot of other teams are getting better and better players because of, you know, the success that they've had and our league's had. So I would say it's getting better. And uh, obviously this year should be no different. All right. A couple of final thoughts before you turn your loose and uh, go back into uh, protocol land uh, and get ready for your, your road trip. Every staff has some unsung heroes on it. And, you know, your assistants, you know, Dwight Perry, and Paul Hamrick and Will Murphy and Adam Sweeney. You know, uh, I, I always say you with an assistant coach background know this better than anybody. Uh, they never really get the full recognition for what they do behind the scenes. How has their job changed this year more so than maybe in the past? What, what's on their plate now, Jay, that maybe wasn't there in the past? Uh, it's, that's a great question. Uh, they're all basically COVID commissioners now for me. And uh, it's a different hat. You know, one's doing laundry for our team. He's never done that um, just to keep our bubble tight. Other guys are in charge of meals and, uh, you know, I probably blast them too much for guys eating too close, but that's what we got to do. And the players understand that. The staff's been fantastic. I've got the best staff in the in the entire country. And Jim, I know you know them and their families a little bit. They're great people. And my medical arm, Elise Hart, you know, they just they're going above and beyond what they've been asked to do in the past in order for this season to exist. And it is, it has it's it is what it is. It's those things have got to happen for our players to be safe, our program to be safe in order to compete. So everybody's chipping in uh, top to bottom, and I couldn't be more proud of them. How about the McCauley family? Was it nice to have dad at home? Um, maybe a little bit more than dad thought he was going to be home in the, in the, in the late spring and the summer. And, uh, you know, this, this affects people on a, on a personal basis, on a family basis. We always get into the basketball end of it because that's our job. But, uh, how, how is everybody doing with, uh, with two youngsters, uh, back at the home? We're good. We're good. Uh, I'm, I'm really thankful for that time to be with my family. And then I think we left for Richmond. It was the first time in eight months that I had left, not even like recruiting. We're not allowed to go out uh, games. I mean, we've been in our house and either there at the arena and uh, you know, my girls were all just confused. They didn't know what was going on because they're so used to me being home every day. So it's been an adjustment and, and I've got a lot to be thankful for with my family. And I know a lot of people do, but my wife, you know, baking cookies for the guys, just trying to be a motherly figure for them when they're isolated here. Uh, all the wives that I have on my staff, it's a big family and they're all looking out for each other and very thankful for that, Jim. Yeah, so. we are too. I, I, I can't wait to see the families back at the arena. I, I can't to see, wait to see our, our great fans be able to come back in. A lot of that's out of our control, uh, but we, uh, we remain optimistic and, uh, I tell you what, from a basketball standpoint, 
I'm really optimistic. I, I think this team has grown in five games. And sometimes you can't say that, you know, and, and, and really I, I thought the coastal game was a real window into what this team can be and excited to get on the plane with you and head down to Texas this weekend and really excited about this 2020 2021 season so thanks for your time we're going to jazz things up and get like next time we'll get a, a really cool whopper background or maybe i'll pretend i'm on the beach somewhere and we'll have some fun with this coach's show and we want to thank rj rockers and all our great sponsors for whopper basketball but we want to thank you for your time and your flexibility and uh we'll keep taking this uh a game at a time absolutely happy holidays terrier fans we miss you and i can't thank you enough for all all the supporting text emails for our players, our staff. It means a lot. It really does. And we can't wait to get you guys back one day. And uh, this team's fighting for you. Just know that. On that note, well said. Thanks, Jay. Thanks to everybody for watching. We'll be doing this periodically throughout the season, probably about once a week. So keep an eye on our YouTube channel. Keep an eye on all the social media accounts for Wofford Basketball. And we'll let you know when the next installment of the head coach Jay McCauley Show airs. For Jay McCauley, I'm Jim Noble. Thanks for watching, everybody.